But like I said, let's get into the topic of the day. Um, and just an absolutely fascinating story. As, as I said, Amani Bates, a kid that some believe at certain points in his high school career was as good as any high school player they have ever seen dating back to LeBron James. He has decided to reclassify to move up a year he will not play high school basketball next year and the possibility exists that he could play college basketball in 2021 according to a tweet and a report from Jeff Goodman uh, Amani Bates is down to four finalists as he has three college options Michigan State Memphis and Oregon and he is also considering the G League as a pro pathway now a couple things before we get into all the nuance of it the first thing I would say I think we can eliminate a couple of those uh, choices right off the top I don't believe he is going to go to Michigan State and for people who don't know the backstory Amani Bates again really elite player he is from the state of Michigan and it was actually about a year and a half ago maybe 16 months ago I think it was last April May June sometime during the pandemic he actually committed to Michigan State he has since decommitted, and my understanding is I don't even know if Michigan State is still actively recruiting Amani Bates to play college basketball at Michigan State. I think they kind of moved on. I think they kind of understand he's probably not going to play college basketball, and if they do, I don't even know if they necessarily want him for next year as talented as he may be. It's worth noting they actually have a kid in this 2021 high school class named Jaden Atkins who played high school basketball at with Amani Bates last year at a school that Amani Bates' dad started. And the kid quit, and the reason he quit was because he didn't get along with Amani Bates. Not saying that Tom Izzo is going to pass up on a transcendent talent, um, but I, I, I just, it, to me, as good as Michigan State is, I don't think they're a real player. Now, I could be 100% wrong. Don't think they're a real player, though. I think we can also eliminate Oregon right off the top. I'm just going to tell you, again, could be completely wrong. I'm reacting in real time. A lot of things can happen. A lot of things can change. I just don't see Oregon being the school. Does it make sense? I know they're a big Nike school. I know they have Nike money. I know we live in a name, image, likeness world. I just can't imagine one of the most marketable and potentially transcendent high school basketball players of the last couple decades playing college basketball for a year or two at Oregon. Now, before we get to the other two choices, Memphis or the G League, it's worth noting what I just said. I said a year or two of college basketball. Now, some of you are probably sitting there saying, Torres, what are you talking about? If this kid is as good as you think that he is, as good as everybody says he is, there is no way he is going to play college basketball for two years. Except there's one problem, and there's one circumstance, and there's one situation that everybody needs to understand. Imani Bates is not eligible for next year's NBA draft. If you remember, I've talked about it all throughout the spring. I've talked about it with Jalen Duran, the other elite player in the class of 2022 that is going to reclassify. Jalen Duran is going to reclassify because right now he only meets one of two criteria as it pertains to being eligible for next year's NBA draft. To be eligible for the NBA draft, your high school class has to be one year removed from high school. You, you have to be one year removed from your high school graduation. And you also have to turn 19 years old in the year of the NBA draft. And so when you look at Jalen Duran, Jalen Duran is going to be 18 years old this year, 2021. He will be 19 years old next year in 2022, which means that he has to graduate this year to make sure that he is eligible for next year's NBA draft. If he plays high school basketball this coming season, it just pushes back his draft clock another year because, again, you have to be one year removed from high school basketball. And so when you look at all the players through the years who have reclassified into college basketball, all of them have done so because they are a year older going into their senior year. Marvin Bagley was a year older going into his senior year. Uh, Anthony Edwards was a year older going into his senior year. Nico Mannion, Jalen Duran, who is about to make that announcement and decision this week. They would all be 18 years old, 19 years old during their senior year of high school, which means they're pushing back their draft clock. And by moving up a year, moving up their high school graduation, it makes them one step closer to being NBA draft eligible. And then after one year of playing college basketball, they can go ahead and enter the NBA draft. What makes Imani Bates different is this. He's 17 years old right now. 
He will not be 18 until January of 2022, about six months from now. So because he will not be eligible for the, because he will not be uh, 18 years old until 2022, it means that it doesn't matter when he graduates high school, he is not going to be eligible for the 2022 NBA draft. And so if you listen to Monday's episode, I kind of just threw it out there. I said, I don't really understand why Imani Bates would, re- I-, I talked about the possibility, this rumor that Imani Bates would reclassify, and I said, I don't really understand it because unless he knows that the NBA draft is going to change its rules and allow 18-year-olds to enter, it doesn't make sense for him to reclassify and move up a year to play either college basketball or professional basketball because even if he moves up and graduates high school, he is still going to be two full years removed from being eligible for the NBA draft. Unless the NBA draft changes its rules, he will not be eligible for the uh, for the NBA draft until 2023, even though Jalen Duran, who is in a similar situation, will be eligible for 2022. I hope all that makes sense, but it explains why this is an unprecedented move because for the third time, Unless the NBA changes its draft rules, he is still two years removed away from high school basketball or from the NBA. That's why I thought he'd play high school basketball this year, play one year, whether it was in the G League, overseas, or in college in 2022 23, and then go to the 2023 NBA draft. Instead, according to all reports, and Jeff Goodman's not going to put it out there if it's not true, Amani Bates is reclassifying. He's going to graduate this summer and he is going to do one of two things next year either play college basketball or go to the pros. And so in terms of what his possibilities are, as I said, he's down to four. Michigan State, Oregon, Memphis, and the G League. I don't believe that Oregon is really a factor. I don't even know if Michigan State is definitively still recruiting Imani Bates. And so that leaves two places, the G League or Memphis. The first one, which is probably the more obvious one, is the G League. Amani Bates is a kid that for years has, it's never been thought that Amani Bates was going to play college basketball, dating back to when he was a freshman in high school. At the time, we thought they might change the NBA draft rules. We thought that he might be eligible to go straight out of high school. But basically, as long as Amani Bates has been on the scene as a high school basketball player, it has been kind of assumed that he would not play college basketball. It makes sense also that he would consider the G League. This is a kid that, as I've said a few times, and I've talked about him on this show before, he is a kid that many people believed at one point in his high school career to be maybe the best high school player since LeBron. While he certainly hasn't regressed necessarily over the last two or three years, he has not progressed to the point that people believe definitively that he is the best player in high school basketball, let alone, he's not even the best player in high school basketball right now, let alone the best player potentially since LeBron. And so because of it, going to the G League makes sense. His development has stagnated. He hasn't been as good. He's been playing for his dad. He hasn't been pushing himself. All of the things that would make a player kind of his progression stagnate, all of those things happen. We'll go to the the G League, get professional training 24 hours a day, year round, Uh, you play against pros, and it's going to better prepare you for the NBA. And now you have two years there to prepare for an NBA future. I think that's definitely in play. Jason Hart, as I said, former USC assistant coach is now there. Jason Hart played in the NBA for 10 years. Jason Hart is a great talent developer. And if Imani Bates makes that decision, I would not be shocked. At the same time, though, there is also a fascinating fascinating alternative that could be at play as well could it be that Amani Bates is considering reclassifying playing at Memphis where he could potentially ter- team up with Jalen Durant that's right the top two high school players in the class of 2022 were supposed to be seniors next year both of them move up to play college basketball next season Now, what I would say is, I am not saying it's going to happen. I haven't heard definitively from anybody that it is something that is definitively in the cards. But what I am going to tell you, though, it has been a rumor that has been out there for two, three, four weeks now. And I even talked about it a little bit on last episode on Monday. I talked about the idea that I didn't really understand why Amani Bates would do that because he had two years removed from the NBA draft. But it has been a rumor. And if you look at the timing of everything... It all is fascinating, right? Jalen Duran earlier this week 
announces he is going to make his final decision for the 2021-2022 season in the upcoming week. He will make his decision on Friday. He is choosing between Memphis, Miami, Kentucky, G League, and the NBL overseas in Australia. And I've gone over all the situation. Miami has kind of the family ties. Kentucky has the pathway to the pros. Memphis has kind of this hybrid, uh, we're kind of junior NBA where we have Larry Brown on our staff now. So I've gone through all of it. But it is interesting that there was a rumor that Amani Bates would reclassify to play with Jalen Duran. All a rumor. Then Jalen Duran announces his decision date. Then Imani Bates announces he's going to reclassify all within the same couple days. So I'm not saying it's going to happen. But what I am saying is the timing sure is interesting. And if that does happen, and by the way, again, they both have really good options. Jalen Duran could choose Miami because of the possibility that he, you know, he has the, the, the family ties there with, with his former AAU and high school coach that's now coaching at Miami. He could choose the G League. He could choose whatever. Bonnie Bates could choose to go play professionally. I'm not saying it's going to happen. Not saying it's definitive. All I am saying is, can you imagine if this happened? Listen, I, I, I know I do hyperbole a lot, and I know I yell and scream, and I know I'm high energy, and I drive, you probably drive half of you crazy. I know Rachel hates my voice. I know that much. But can you imagine the story of college basketball next season with the number one and number two high school basketball players, two of the elite players to play high school basketball in the last decade, both reclassifying, both going to Memphis, both, by the way, doing it in August, but both doing it, both going to Memphis. I mean, you talk about a mega, mega college basketball story. I mean, this is, this. I can't even think of what would be parallel to this. I mean, I don't, I, you know, I, I assume that they will be the number one and number two players in the class of 2021. Now, now you could make the case for Chet Holmgren at Gonzaga, Paolo Bancaro, whatever, but I only bring it up because have we ever, well, first of all, I know we haven't ever seen two players this late in the process both go down a grade, play college basketball the next year, let alone do it on the same team. Anthony Edwards decided to reclassify a year out. Carl Anthony Towns, a year out. Um, you know, Marvin Bagley did it in the middle of the summer and he went to Duke. But two players of this caliber, this would be the biggest story in sports. And obviously it'd be a big boon for college basketball. With the way we cover high school basketball, the NBA, and the NBA draft, I guarantee you this would be one of the biggest stories in basketball. Forget the NBA. Yes, LeBron, Carmelo, all those guys with the Lakers, the Nets, the this, the that. This story would be on parallel with everything because you have two potential future number one and number two overall picks, or in theory, potentially two back-to-back -back number one overall picks on the same team at the same time. It is crazy to think about. I would say it'd also be a huge win for college basketball in general just for both of these guys to, again, say no to all these professional opportunities, overseas money, G League money, this and that. It would be monstrous. And of course, if it does happen, we would have to give a shout out to Penny Hardaway. I know Memphis fans think that I hate Penny Hardaway. I actually respect the heck out of him. The one thing I can definitively tell you, he is a very aggressive recruiter. Um, you know, uh, you know more so than most, and uh, you know more than most college coaches. This guy is on face. You know, as much as I guess ruled allowed by the NCAA, this guy's on FaceTime. This guy's texting. This guy's calling. This guy is an aggressive recruiter. And if this happens, I mean, it would. I, I don't know what it would mean, but it would completely change the narrative of Penny Hardaway, who, as I've told you the last couple episodes, for two years has been selling Memphis as this pathway for college ba for elite high school basketball players to come play college basketball. A couple more thoughts. I think it's worth noting. Again, this is all speculation on my part. I am just putting two and two together. We will find out very quickly where Jalen Duran's going. Could go to the G League. Could go to Miami. But all of his crystal balls recently have been with Memphis, and if, um, if he commits, then it will be Amani Bates' watch. It's also worth considering something else. I thought Amani Bates made a very interesting comment to Jeff Goodman. I'm going to try to pull it up here in real time um, because Jeff Goodman, uh, you know, again, proposed the possibility of like, wait a second now, you still have two years before college before you can leave to go to the NBA draft. And this is what Amani Bates told Jeff Goodman. He said he will take this year by year and reevaluate after this season wherever he goes. But there is a chance that if he goes to college, he'll be there for two years. Why is that important? It's because if Imani Bates 
cares about first of all if he cares about playing with Jalen Duran, um, and he cares about his development. Amani Bates, the world is his oyster right now. I guess that's the best way to put it. If he wants to go to the G League for two years, he's going to be a millionaire for two years. He's going to be a millionaire at 17. He's going to take care of his parents. And hopefully, in theory, he is going to develop into a future NBA player under the tutelage of that G League Ignite staff. But if he decides to go to college, he has two years. So the possibility exists Jalen Duran can leave after the NBA draft this year. And so the possibility exists you go to Memphis, you ball out for a season with Jalen Duran, you try to win a national championship. Won't be easy. Penny Hardaway's never even coached in the NCAA tournament. Not a dig at Penny Hardaway. I'm just stating facts. Go to Memphis. Go, go with Jalen Duran. Jalen Duran goes pro. Then you go to the G League for a year. You go train, you go get paid, you go get, take care of, you get, get, get taken care of, you work with professionals every day, and you have that year of college basketball to continue to build the brand. I would also say, it's kind of also worth noting, um, you know, I think he'd put a little bit of a spotlight on this one and done rule, where you have this elite high school player, he's going to get to college, and most people are going to be scratching their heads. If you don't listen to the Aaron Torres podcast, people are going to be scratching their heads saying, so he went to college for a year and he's still not eligible for the draft? I don't understand how this works. Maybe the rules get changed. Maybe things get altered. Maybe they make an exception for him. I don't know. But all I'm saying is this is a fascinating story. We will start to get details in the coming days as Jalen Duran is ready to make his college commitment. All the college buzz has been with Memphis over the last few days. But if he ends up going to Memphis, then all of a sudden it becomes Amani Bates watch. And if Amani Bates and Jalen Duran go to Memphis in the same year, watch out. This isn't just going to be the biggest story in college basketball. This is going to be one of the biggest stories, I think, in sports. And oh, by the way, it'll just be great in general for college basketball because I think there's already a lot of great teams in college basketball next year. When you look at Gonzaga, when you look at UCLA, when you look at Kentucky, when you look at Texas, when you look at, I think Alabama is going to be really good. Arkansas is going to be really good. There's a lot of really good teams. Villanova, by the way, Villanova, UCLA are playing. So I'm just saying, I'm fired up. Um, but we will see, we will watch. We are now officially on Amani Bates watch and we will stay tuned as first of all, we will get a commitment from Jalen Duran. Then we will get a commitment from Amani Bates and we'll see what happens. And for the last time, I'm not saying, I'm not guaranteeing that we're going to get Amani Bates and Jalen Duran at Memphis. They have their own decisions to make. Jalen Duran was coy when he was asked about it by Joe Tipton of On3 Sports. But if it happens, boy, oh boy, oh boy, what a story that would be.